What's up everybody? So now we are gonna finish the process of cell respiration, okay? So far, we have done this, okay? We have finished glycolysis, the link reaction, and the Krebs cycle. The final stage of cell respiration is electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. And this will all make sense at the end of this video. So basically, um, we're gonna quickly review what we did here so we're up to date and on the same page, okay? So glycolysis is the first stage, and basically we know cell respiration is the process of breaking down glucose into ATP, because ATP is like money for our cells. In our life, in our daily lives, we cannot survive without money, right? We need to buy our food, we need to pay people, all of this, right? So money is super important. For a cell, ATP is like money. Without ATP, it cannot uh, pay all the organelles to do their jobs and so on, okay? The, the cell cannot survive. And if the cell cannot survive, we cannot survive. So that's cell respiration, converting this glucose into this ATP. Now, glycolysis, the first stage, takes this glucose. Here we have a simplified structure of glucose. And we pretty much convert it into two pyruvates, along with some other uh, side byproducts, right? So overall, in glycolysis, we made... A very little ATP so obviously this is not good enough we want a lot more ATP and that was that's gonna happen in the next stages but 2 ATP is not good enough and we made these two pyruvates right this glucose got split in half into two pyruvates we also made some NADH what is NADH again so NADH is super super special molecule NADH is like um, if you go to the arcade right and you play the games a lot and you win you can win a lot of those little tickets Right? These tickets mean nothing by themselves. It's just a piece of paper. But later on, if you have enough of them, you can go to the, to the counter and trade them in right, for a prize, whatever prize it is, right? a unicorn or whatever. But um, in this case, if this, this ticket is basically like NADH. NADH is like this, this ticket that you win. But later on, it can get traded in for ATP. So that's why NADH is so useful. Like We love seeing the ATP here because that's what we want, but this NADH is basically going to become ATP later, and we'll see it in this video. Now, then we go into the next stage. So these pyruvates that were created, again, this happened inside the cytoplasm, so outside of the mitochondria, and not inside in the cytoplasm. Now, the pyruvate now that was created in glycolysis will now enter the mitochondria, specifically this part here, the matrix, the light blue part, the most inner part. So when it, when it enters, it enters something called the link reaction, right? Which converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. And again, we made some other byproducts like NADH and carbon dioxide. Then this acetyl-CoA enters the Krebs cycle, which basically creates a bunch of NADHs, carbon dioxide, but also this FADH, okay? And this FADH is like I put here. It's like a broken ticket. Remember, NADH was a full ticket that can be traded in later for some a good prize. So FADH is like having a broken ticket. So the guy at the counter will be like, mm, I see that you have a ticket, but it's broken, so I'm not going to give you a full prize because it's broken. So that's kind of what FADH is. So it will later be converted to some ATP, but not as much as an NADH molecule is. So that's basically where we left off. So overall, so far, what did we have from those three processes? Four glycolysis we got those three things right ATP and ADH and pyruvate a little bit of ATP only though then we have the link reaction in the link reaction we had we actually made no ATP at all but we did make some NADHs which we know is useful later on for kind of serving as that ticket that will give us some ATP and then the Krebs cycle made only two ATPs as well but we made a whole load of NADHs and some FADH too which we know can be converted into some ATPs later, okay? So that's good. So, so far you can see we didn't make much ATP at all, which is the whole purpose of cell respiration. But we're not done yet. We're gonna do this last part, and guess what? This last part, um, oxidative phosphorylate, phosphorylation, is the name of it, will, cre will create for us 34 ATPs, 34 ATP. So this is really, the stage we're talking about in this video is gonna create all the ATP we were talking about, okay? All the ATP. And also we're gonna create a water, uh, some water molecules, okay? Water molecules will be a byproduct. So let's just get into it. Let's get into the actual thing, okay? Here we are. So what we're doing um, now is now that we know pretty much we have a bunch of these 
these NADHs and FADH2s built up, okay, they're all built up. That's the things that we have now. What's going to what's gonna happen with these now? How are these two molecules going to give us ATP? Let's see. So now we're zooming in. Again, um, now we're zooming into this part here. So this is a mitochondria, right? Mitochondria. We're zooming in to this little square area here, okay? So basically, here it is. Here's the diagram. We see this layer here, which is the outer membrane. The outer membrane, so that's, la that's layer that here. And then we have this inner membrane here, which is that this layer here. And then we have this red space here, which is called the intermembrane space, okay? And again, outside of the this outer membrane will just be the normal cytoplasm of the cell, okay? And then this light blue part here will be this matrix. So that's exactly where we're at now. We know, right, that we basically, let's revise this, we now have a bunch of these NADHs and FADHs built up, right, inside the matrix, because that's where the Krebs cycle happened, inside the matrix. So that's where all the NADHs built up. So we have a bunch of them here in the matrix. Now notice the inner membrane has a bunch of these molecules here, a bunch of these structures, okay? They're basically proteins, okay? A bunch of these channels. And we're going to see exactly why they matter now. So what happens is we essentially have our NADHs that are built up, okay? And they're going to go here. They're going to go to this first one, okay? Now, what they're going to do is they're going to go into this sort of, they're going to approach this, um, oh yeah, by the way, this whole system here is called the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain, and you'll see why re really, really soon. But this, um, anyway, so this NADH comes in, and we know it's ca it, it has this, uh, this hydrogens that they took off from the glucoses and pyruvates and stuff from before. So they have this hydrogen, so basically they're carrying it to this, um, this molecule here, and they're going to drop it off, okay? So essentially, let me show you. Okay? A hydrogen will get dropped off okay and now this molecule will instead be called what NAD plus right so it lost the hydrogen now this hydrogen after it dropped off will now get shoved through this thing okay into the intermembrane space okay so basically this hydrogen jumps off when it comes into contact with this molecule here and now it's gonna sh go through there okay but one other thing happened let me first show this. So yeah, they move in here, bunch of hydrogen, so a bunch of them, okay? Over time, over time, and for one molecule, only one hydrogen goes in, but after time, a lot of NADHs will come and a lot of hydrogens will get dropped off, and so a lot of them will enter this intermembrane space. Now, in addition to that, we have something else interesting happen, okay? We have electrons yeah here's the best part at the same time that hydrogen was dropped off from NADH there was also electrons dropped off these electrons will move along this electron transport chain that's why they call it the electron transport chain because these electrons that were dropped off were transported all along this chain of molecules okay now these individual molecules that carry these electrons are called electron carriers so you can see after this electron bounces off it's gonna now move along this chain until the very end and something interesting is gonna happen there okay something interesting else is gonna happen there so what exactly happens there so basically over there so we're skipping this molecule for now. We're going to come back to this one just now. But basically, over here at this third molecule, there's a bunch of oxygens, okay? Oxygens and, of course, some H pluses, okay? Because we know some H pluses fall off and some go through here. Some stay in the matrix. Now, when these electrons come, they're going to join all these protons or these hydrogens with positive hydrogens with oxygen, and they're going to join them together, okay? So let me show you here. So the electrons come, electrons come combining with all of these and this will form water, okay? Because we know the electrons are negative and they attract these positive protons and when they all combine together, the charge goes away. The, the negative charge evens out the positive charge and now we have what? Water, okay? That's what we have now. So that's what's been happening. So, so far, we managed to pump in a bunch of protons into this inter intermembrane space and the electrons... 
uh, travel along here, okay? And in the process of traveling along here, when they get to this final one, they help convert this, all these protons and oxygen into water. Now, as they do that, they also activate this, when the electrons reach here, they also activate this, uh, this pump to pump in some hydrogens. So now, some hydrogens will get pumped in as well. So you can see, overall, this process is making a whole bunch of hydrogens accumulate here in the intermembrane space, okay? That's what we're doing so far. Now, one more thing. Remember, we made some FADHs, some FADH2s, right? Now, the FADH2s don't go to this first one here. They go to the second the second molecule here. And here, they will basically drop off hydrogens. So, just like this. Okay, here they go. They drop off hydrogens. Oh, sorry, something's messing up here. Come to that part later. Okay, so they drop off hydrogens. Now, again, when, when the hydrogens drop, drop off, now, when they get dropped off, they're going to get shot, shot through this thing as well, this pump as well. So now they're shot through, and now again, we have hydrogens building up. Okay, so you can see this whole process is pretty much aiming at building up a whole bunch of hydrogens inside this space, okay, inside this intermembrane space. At the same time, oh, while dropping off this hydrogen, it also dropped, dropped off some electrons. But these electrons, again, are carried down continuously until this part to form water, okay? So now we have all these hydrogens built up, right? So what was the purpose of this? We haven't made ATP yet. That's true. So now it gets so crowded in here, so many protons build up, that basically it gets too crowded. Some things have to leave. And the only way that they have to leave this intermembrane space is through this little molecule here called an ATPase. Let me show you. ATPase. ATPase, or you can call it ATP synthase, okay? ATP synthase. Oh yeah, again, remember those electron transport chain, the electron carriers, and the ATP synthase. Okay, so basically, now, since it's so crowded, now these will start going through here. And guess what? As they go through here, they power, or they power another reaction. Let me show you. So, we have this arrow here. It's going to go through there, and it's going to power this reaction. So basically, inside the matrix, we have a bunch of ADPs. We know we, know we don't want ADP, we want ATP. So we have these ADPs, okay? And we have some P's, okay, floating around, okay? But we want them together because if we put them together, they're called ATP, right? So basically, now these hydrogens are going to start flowing through through a process, by a process called chemiosmosis. So here it is. Let me show you. Chemiosmosis. So chemiosmosis is the process by which the name we give the process of these protons floating through this ATP synthase. And we call it the ATP synthase because it's going to synthesize some ATPs for us. So as it goes through here, it powers this ATP synthase, kind of like a switch. It's turning on this ATP synthase, causing it to put these ADPs, up, I mean, put these uh, organic phosphates onto this ADP, forming an ATP, okay? So this happens. So this is basically the overall process. And we call this, we have a name for this, I need to show you. We call it oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, why this? This whole process was called oxidative phosphorylation because oxidation means loss of electrons or hydrogen, right? Now these NADHs lost all their hydrogen, so that's oxidation. But at the same time, oxidation can mean gaining oxygen. And so these hydrogens, these protons here, gained an oxygen to form water. So in a sense, that's also oxidation. Now, phosphoryl phosphorylation is the process of putting a phosphate onto another molecule. And in this case, we're putting a phosphate onto ADP to form ATP. 
So if we put these two together, it's called oxidative phosphorylation. So that's the entire process. Now, for each, for one NADH, okay, for one each NADH molecule, we f we allow the formation of three ATPs. Okay, for each FADH2 molecule, we allow the formation of two ATPs. So that's why I said the FADHs are less valuable. They're like a broken ticket, whereas the NADHs are like a full ticket, right? So each NADH will give us three ATPs. Each FADH2 will give us um, two ATPs, okay? So they're slightly less valuable. So let's now go back to what we have. What just happened? So we managed to create 34 ATPs. How was that possible? Okay, the reason why is because uh, how many NADH did we have? We had 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay? And we know if we have 10 NADHs, each NADH will give us 3 ATPs. So if we have 10 NADHs here, times that by 3, that's already 30 ATPs, right? 30 ATPs. But that's not it. We also had two FADHs, and each FADH gives us two ATPs each. That means we, for two FADHs, we have four ATPs. So if we add 30 ATPs to four ATPs, that's 34 ATPs, right? So that's why we managed to create so much ATP, okay? Now that's it. Now our cells have a bunch of ATP, and they can just use that to drive all the processes that they need to to be able to survive. Okay, that's why we're so hungry all the time. That's why we eat this burger so that we can form this glucose so that this glucose can give us some ATP.